All right, so I've already called the Galaxy S10 Plus an everything phone, and it is, it's really great. But $1,000 is $1,000, and that's a lot of money. And if you'd like to hold on to more of it, then you might be thinking that the Galaxy S10e here, which starts for $750, is a really great option. Luckily for you, it is. What is the Galaxy S10e? Well, it's the cheapest of Samsung's new Galaxy S10 phones. It's also the smallest, with the smallest battery, and has the fewest number of cameras on the back and front. There's also a flat screen rather than a curved display, Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back rather than a helping of Gorilla Glass 6, and, this part is important, the Galaxy S10e has a fingerprint reader built into the power button instead of the in-screen ultrasonic fingerprint scanner that you see in the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus but otherwise, you're looking at the same core specs as those other two phones, and that's what makes the Galaxy S10e such a compelling choice. It's incredibly fast with its industry-topping Snapdragon 855 processor, it uses Android Pie with Samsung's One UI interface on top, can wirelessly charge another device, and the photography is top-notch. Still, there are a couple things you're going to want to know about before making your final decision, like is the fingerprint scanner better or worse than the Galaxy S10 Plus? How about the cameras? How about battery life? And how does it stand up to the competition? Let's start with the size and design. The Galaxy S10e has a 5.8 inch screen that takes up most of the phone face. It looks really slick and it allows the phone body to remain nice and compact. If you're coming from a large screen device like the 6.4 inch Galaxy S10 Plus, like I did, the S10e feels really, really small. But small isn't a bad thing. My hands are on the small side, so the S10e is a much more natural fit. I didn't have to stretch my fingers as far to work the screen. The phone fit better in my pocket. Typing felt faster because the keyboard is smaller. Also, I could much more easily hold the phone in one hand while selecting photo settings with the other. The S10e has a flat screen and straighter sides, which in a way also makes it feel more secure in my hand compared to a curved screen. This is important for a phone as slippery and glossy as this, but I would recommend that you buy a case to be extra sure. It has slipped off tabletops during my testing. Screen resolution isn't as sharp as on the S10 and S10 Plus, but I could still read outside just fine, and I honestly couldn't make out a quality difference when looking at videos, photos, and web pages side by side with the S10 Plus. It's a negligible difference, really. The main thing you have to be okay with is the smaller screen size in general. Now let's get back to the fingerprint reader. It's built into the power button on the side, but the button doesn't stick out like the volume keys. It's flat and indented so it can register your print. I'm usually a big fan of this design because it's fast, accurate, and ergonomic as long as you're right-handed. I had a lot of success with this capacitive reader, more so I would say than with the in-screen ultrasonic fingerprint reader that's in the Galaxy S10 Plus. So don't feel like you're missing out on cutting edge tech here. You can still get into your phone quickly and use Samsung Pay or Google Pay without trying to find the target on the back of the phone. You can also still launch the camera app by double tapping the power button. Still, there are two things that I find a little odd. First, Samsung put the fingerprint reader pretty high up, so I did have to stretch a little bit to reach it. If you have bigger hands, that might not be a problem for you. Second, taking screenshots just felt weird. That's because the power button is now flat and sunken in, while the volume down key is thin and raised. It's not hard, it's just kind of strange. Now let's talk about the cameras. The Galaxy S10 Plus is the deluxe model with three cameras on the back and two on the front. The S10e is all about essentials. That's actually what the E stands for. So you get two cameras on the back and one on the front. This is actually all you really need. The S10e has a 12 megapixel dual aperture lens, just like last year's Galaxy S9, and also a 16 megapixel wide angle lens. The S10 Plus has these too. The only thing that you're really missing from that other phone is that there's no telephoto lens on the E. That's a nice to have, but it's not a need to have. On the front is the same 10 megapixel camera as the other S10 phones. You can do almost everything you can on the S10 Plus, including taking great photos and videos and capturing portrait mode shots with cool effects. You can switch between the two rear lenses for a different view, and there's software that lets you do the same for the front facing camera, portrait selfies too. Photo quality is just as good on the $1,000 S10 Plus. The biggest omission for me is that there's no dedicated night mode on any of the S10 phones, but that's something I would expect in a premium model, not necessarily the value model anyway. Let's turn our focus to battery life. 
The S10 Plus is an absolute powerhouse, lasting from early morning to late, late nights on a single charge. I never had to worry about it. I might have to worry just a little bit more about the S10e because its battery is a little smaller to begin with. It has a 3100 milliamp battery that lasted about 17 hours in our video looping tests on airplane mode. That's really good. And in real life, it definitely took me from my 6 a.m. wake up until a 10 p.m. bedtime. That's including tethering the phone to my laptop and downloading Netflix videos. Still, it didn't last quite as long as the larger phone, and if you use the phone heavily, you might run out of steam sooner. Battery life also dwindles over time, so you should absolutely plan on charging it once a day. Overall though, dynamite. In terms of storage, the S10e is a little bit more modest than the S10 Plus, which can get you up to a terabyte of onboard storage. Most people don't really need that though. The Galaxy S10e's 128 gigabyte starting storage with six gigs of RAM is pretty generous, especially when paired with a 512 gigabyte external storage option. But if you feel you need more, there's also a 256 gigabyte model with eight gigs of RAM. We're gonna talk about the competition in just a minute, but first I wanna talk about upgrades. Is this phone worth getting? If you're upgrading from a phone that's two years old or older, then sure, do it, it's fantastic. But if you've got the Galaxy S9 already and you're thinking about an upgrade, I would really hesitate. There's not really that much different to justify the buy, even though this is a cheaper phone and it's better than the Galaxy S9 in every way. If you do wanna make that move, I would look around for sales and promotions first. All right, but what if you're comparing it to other phones in the same price range, say the iPhone XR and the OnePlus 6T, or maybe you wanna hold out for the OnePlus 7? This is when things get a little bit more complicated. I'm not a strong fangirl one way or another. I think there's a lot to like about Android and iOS. If you agree, then you really need to weigh what you care about most. The iPhone XR has slightly longer battery life in our lab tests, but the S10e has double the starting storage and an expandable memory slot. Both charge wirelessly, but only the S10e can charge another device. The S10e has a fingerprint reader, the iPhone has Face ID, they both unlock your phone, they're both secure enough for mobile payments, so at this point, it's kind of up to you. It's not just about Apple. The S10e also faces stiff competition from the OnePlus 6T, which is also a great phone and cheaper still at $550. The OnePlus phone has a larger screen and larger battery, dual rear cameras, and the same onboard storage options, but no micro SD card slot. It uses last year's Snapdragon processor, which is still pretty great. If you're trying to get a premium phone as cheap as possible, then saving $200 with the OnePlus 6T might sound tempting. But in the US, T-Mobile is the only OnePlus 6T carrier, unless you buy the phone unlocked. You could also wait to see what the OnePlus 7 brings. So my final assessment of the Galaxy S10e, it's a fantastic phone and it's a really great value too. I love the screen, everything about it. I love the size, the grip in my hand feels really secure. I have smaller hands, so I really enjoy it for typing. I think the fingerprint reader is accurate. I really like it. I think it's better than the S10 Plus. And I don't think you're missing a lot by not having all of those cameras. I think the only detraction maybe is that there's gonna be some price competition from other phones. But other than that, this is a hit. Thank you.